And the third compartment of the leg muscles is the posterior compartment muscles. And there's a number of them. And these posterior compartment muscles are divided into superficial and into deep groups. So starting with the superficial group, there's our gastrocnemius muscle. And the gastrocnemius muscle arises from two heads on the two lateral condyles of the femur. And they're so the weak flexors of the back of the knee joint. And then these two bellies come down and they fuse. Um, at the uh, Achilles tendon that goes all the way down to the calcaneus and why it's also called the calcaneal tendon or tendocalcaneus. So in red, we're just going to outline that belly and take a scalpel. We're going to cut along the side and whoop, take that gastroc away. And then there's also in the superficial group, sometimes known as the intermediate group, hence why it says at the bottom, posterior view, intermediate layer, is our soleus muscle, which arises um, both from the tibia and from the fibula, but it also goes down and it inserts on this Achilles tendon down to that calcaneus. And so since that Achilles tendon has the two heads of the gastroc and the soleus, they sometimes call this group the triceps suri, three-headed muscle suri on the leg. Uh, these two muscles, gastroc and soleus, are very strong plantar flexors. This plantaris is between the gastroc and the soleus. It comes, arises from the uh, lateral uh, condyle of the femur, and it goes down to the calcaneus. This is what they call the freshman nerve because it looks like a nerve, but it's not. Yeah, I don't care if you know this one. Um, so there's our posterior group. So in red, we're just going to outline the soleus, take a scalpel and cut that out of the way, and now we're in the deep compartment or this deep group, the first of which, and then down here it says deep layer, just so you know that we're still in the right leg, it's just in the deep part. In purple, there's the popliteus muscle lying deep within that popliteal fossa. It arises from the lateral condyle of the femur and goes to the medial part of the tibia. This muscle, most books will say it'll flex the knee, but at that it's very weak. Its primary action is when your knee is locked, when your knee is extended and the tibia rotates in relation to the femur and your knees lock, popliteus, when it contracts, will unlock that knee. Uh, the tibialis posterior is next, and it's going to arise from the back of the tibia, fibula, and interosseous membrane, and it's going to, going to course more medially uh, before entering to the plantar surface of the foot. So here, because it goes vertically behind the tibiotalar joint, it's going to help with plantar flexion. But then what happens is it comes medially, and then its tendon spreads out into that medial part of the first metatarsal, and then uh, part of the... Um, uh, part of the, uh, pr the those medial tarsals, but then to those base of the, s the metatarsals. And as a result, when it contracts, it's going to help with inversion. Our flexor digitorum longus. Uh, it arises from the tibia and then courses down in this medial part and then uh, sends its tendon off to all the digits two through five of the lesser toes. And so not only will it... Uh, plantar flex the tibiotalar joint, it will also flex the lesser toes, um, curling your toes to the ground. Our flexor hallucis longus, remember hallucis means great toe, so this is going to rise primarily from the fibula and it's going to course down medially and then send off its long tendon to your great toe or the hallucis. So not only does it plantar flex the ankle, it also flexes the great toe or curls it down. So here we have those the three primary uh, muscles. We've got Tom, we've got Dick, and we've got Harry that stand for tibialis, Tom, posterior, flexor digitorum longus, Dick, and flexor hallucis longus, Harry. Now recognize that this is the orientation at the medial part of the ankle as they course through the tarsal tunnel, not proximally in the back of the leg, but down there in the medial part of the ankle. Um, so here we have all of those muscles, superficial leg uh, in the posterior back, uh, the posterior compartment, superficial in deep group. Uh, and then there we have them all color coded. And what's the benefit of using them, learning them in compartments? There's common action. So all of these muscles are going to help with plantar flexion of the ankle joint. And all of these muscles are going to be innervated by, bam, the tibial nerve.